The story begins with my grandparents interlocking holy hands without marriage bands. They tried kissing temptation. Like prostitutes, they hoped that the compilation of these one nights could create an eternity. But instead, these same unwed hands sculpted the forms of six beautiful children. But my grandfather died with a surname of Scott while my grandmother still holds the name Frances so close to her bosom that it hitches right behind her first name. It was told that due to some strange series of events, my family had a curse put on them. Kind of like a mutation on their 23rd chromosome, every fiber of their being had sexual sin etched within, and somehow this is a story that I can believe. During the separation of my father and his first ex-wife, I was conceived. For the first year of my life, I was also known to my half-siblings as that girl my father was helping out. Until one day, he finally decided to say, hey, this is your baby sister, and suddenly I went from charity case to sibling. I went from charity case to sibling. During my third birthday, I saw Plato up my nose. So far back that I could no longer tell where my nose ended and where the Plato began. My parents were so afraid. But once they finally got the situation completely under control and got every piece of Plato from out of my nostrils, first, of course, I got the biggest spanking of my lifetime. But then, my father, he taught me a valuable lesson that I decided to sound the best in song. When something like this. Nothing is supposed to go in the middle's hole, in the body hole, in the other hole. <laughs> past that place with me, I was kind of a one-hit wonder. <laughs> Until one day, I heard myself humming that long-forgotten tune, in the minnow's hole, in the body hole, in the other hole. Something wasn't right. My father told me that nothing was supposed to go there. And I'm the other hole, and I'm the other hole, and I'm the other hole. I chanted as I felt my brother's cold fingers slip between my skin and my pull-ups. And I'm the other hole, and I'm the other hole, and I'm the other hole. Until I saw my dad burst in in a rage that I had never seen before. A rage which I can still remember. I had never seen my father fist fight one of his children until that night. And I imagined that as he watched my brother's blood fall onto the floor, as he watched his own DNA escape the confines of a son which he called Junior, he realized that he was fighting with himself. Mm. Wow. He was in the crosshairs of a battle that he against demons that he believed died when he clung to the Sabbath, but instead resurrected with his son. It was his son's day to encounter the curse. Hmm. It's his son's day to encounter the curse. That was when my mother began praying over me more than ever. Not because she worried that I was somehow scarred or that 
my house somehow became a casket or that I was somehow living six feet under above ground. She worried that I was them. She worried that the devil carved his fingerprint into my DNA, that he sculpted the greatest identification of himself into my genes. Her Adventist goggles could so clearly read the six, six, six written across my forehead, kind of like incomplete figure eights. It seemed as though the devil had ice skated across the frozen corridors of my temples, and suddenly my table of showbread was looking kind of stale, and the lights upon my seven candlesticks were looking pretty dim, and she worried that like Pavlov's dogs, the imprinting which he had done would have me calling him father. But sometimes, she preferred that to the one that I called dad. My brothers, they're in jail now. My brother Ian, he always inspired me. He had a light in his smile. And anytime I was lost, I would use that smile as my North Star. He always pushed me to be a better person, yet he was charged with rape. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I wonder if he saw his little sister smile in her screams, if he saw a glimmer in her eye which resembled mine. I wonder if his teeth still resemble the North Star, if his smile can still rival that the scintillation of constellations, if the heaven still visits his mouth resting place. I wonder if lightning can strike twice. If demons of this caliber can exist in pairs, and if so, why did they all decide to pair themselves to the Scott name? When I was 16, my dad called me and jokingly said, hey, this is your baby brother. This was the second time that lightning struck into bad luck, beginning the moment that my dad decided to suck on the lips of a woman who was not his wife. The wing seamen like hockey pucks, he always made a goal. This was the first time that my tear ducts ran dry. The first time that I realized that there was an eye in Quickie and that I was just a quick thought that ran across his mind while trying to find the product to be fruitful and multiply. I realized that even though there was no eye in apple, I was the fruit of sin. I worried that the apple never fell too far from the tree and that he was the root of my iniquity. I worried that my little brother would never be able to pass this curse. I worried that not even his bright eyes, his sly smile would allow him to slip through the, I would allow him to slip through this Scott man statistic. But instead he would slip through the cracks in his foundation and slip into the cracks of women that he had no business being with and crack a smile every time he cracked open the, the treasure chest of a woman until sexual iniquity became his crack. I was about to crack. I was about to crack. Until I realized that we are not the sum total of our genes. We are not our parents' choices. We were given the gift of choice. And we can either choose to cling to those obituaries written in the transcript of our genes, or we can become that peculiar people. So never, 
Never let anyone make you ashamed of your testimony. But instead, shout it until the mountains became, begin to quake, until the earth fears your strength, until demons tremble and you become the exception to your family's curse.